Hello everybody. Welcome back to Korea with Jimmy. Today I want to talk about the things I've learned while living in Korea for three years. So I want to thank everybody for tuning in. If this is the first time you've been here, my name is Jimmy Rance. I live in South Korea. I've been living here for three years. And that's exactly what this video is about today. So let's start with a little bit of a backstory as to why I'm in Korea. It all starts back in 2009 when I met a beautiful Korean lady who I absolutely fell in love with and that I wanted to spend a lot more time with her. And at that point, in 2009, I was working for a supermarket in Australia and we met there. She was working holiday and she got my phone number and she called me and we hit it off from there and she had to go back to Korea in 2009 nine at the end in December and I was like oh I gotta go to Korea so I came to Korea in 2010 for 10 months on a working holiday visa and although I didn't do any work I managed to survive on tax return and a little bit of money I saved up and then um, yeah we I traveled around Korea for 10 months we went to Jeju Island the honeymoon island for one month riding around on bicycles, camping in tents, free camping and stuff. So, you know, that's that was a really exciting time of our lives. And now, uh, then we, obviously I was only one year visa, so I went back to Australia. We went back together, unbeknownst to her family that she had a strong relationship with me and they didn't really like it, but oh, I just swallowed a fly. But uh, she just, she really wanted to be with me, so we went back to Australia. Sorry guys, I didn't say where we are, I'm just walking around the rice paddocks out here, uh, near where we're camping at the moment, in Ansong, South Korea. Yeah, so we lived in Australia, I went back to work in for the supermarket, and I was, we lived in Australia from 2011 to 2016 until we came back here, but every year we travelled to Korea and during that time we got married and I met her family after they come around to it and I thought, you know, he's not such a bad guy after all. And maybe they can make it work and we moved we moved to Korea in two thousand and sixteen because my father in law had a stomach stomach cancer and we knew his time wasn't going to be much longer and I really wanted her to build a have time with her family. I wanted to build a relationship with her father as well, obviously. Limited Korean, but I think he taught me so much Korean. And I really like that. Uh, he did pass away, so that was sad, but that was one of the reasons why we came over here. And then uh, since we've been here, like I've, we had our own English business and I've worked for private English companies so I've had a job to stick to and stuff but now I, I wanted to change that so anyway that's quite a long introduction so let's uh, let's get into the first reason first one I've already kind of talked about it, is to take a risk you know back in 2010 I, I would I took that risk I was I was in a job where I was you know a manager of a team and I was looking close to get promoted like if I stuck around for another month or two I would have got promoted and if I had stayed in that company now I probably would be store manager or something but at that time I wasn't really satisfied I guess I, I fell in love with the girl I wanted to be with her instead I didn't really care about the business and then when I went back to Australia they gave me the job and to and fro that's what happened before before I come to Korea, I was back in the same company. I wasn't at the manager level because I couldn't stick around because I was always in and out of that place. So they didn't really want to, I guess they didn't really trust me that I was going to stick around and they were right anyway. So it's just, to, you know, you got to take that risk. So I'm so glad I took that risk. When we came here to Korea in 2016, we didn't have any idea what we were going to do. We didn't know where we were going to live. We found a place online and we didn't even know like 
if we were getting a good deal, if we were getting a bargain, if it was expensive. We realised once we got to Korea that the place we were renting was quite expensive for Korean Korean standards. So we quickly got got out of there. But you know, there's so many things in life that people want to do, but they're just so comfortable living their life that they they just say, "Oh, when I get this amount of money, or when I get a girlfriend, when I get a boyfriend, I'll do this." Or, Oh, I want to travel overseas, but I don't want to lose my job. And we just, there's so many times when we don't take those opportunities that we really should be jumping in there and just go for it. Like, people always, a lot of time, worry about money, but money, there's so much money in the world. You don't need to worry about money. You worry about leaving your family. You come into this world with nothing, you leave it with nothing. That's what I always like to say. It's true though, right? So if you if there's something you want to do out there guys, I encourage you to do it. If there's something you want to do, go ahead and do it. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to do it. Go out there and try something new. You might actually enjoy it. And hey, if every if you head overseas you maybe you've just left you school or you want to have your break from uni you know take a year off go overseas if you run out of money make sure you just have the money to go back to your country and it's not so bad you know media and stuff make it out like it's a big bad world like something happened to you make sure you got travel insurance and all that because you might need it but at the same time i don't think i've ever bought travel insurance except for the six weeks i traveled to europe so you know Nothing's really ever happened to me. Anyway, that's a that's a good point. Take a risk. Next one is about actually learning about a foreign country, learning about crib, actually living here. Like I even remember thinking about it now when I met my wife, my girlfriend at the time. I actually had to ask her, like, are you from North or South Korea or which is the good one, which is the bad one? Because honestly I I never really took that much attention or we don't really get taught about Korea in school anyway in Australia so you know you don't really know that much about it until you actually come here which is true for any country really China Japan America Canada although Western countries are all a little bit more similar than Asian countries so but coming here like the media in Australia would be always about North Korea and stuff and people people think because of that when you live in Korea you must feel like you're in danger of North Korea but it's it's not like that it's you know I just feel like normal like back in Australia no problem not to worry about it people always ask me oh what's Kim Jong-un up to what's North Korea up to? I don't know I don't watch the news it doesn't concern me you know one day a missile hits Korea then I'll start worrying about it but right now don't have to worry about that and the Korean people here like I guess people have their own connotations on what uh, Asian people are like but uh, I'm very impressed by the Korean people very friendly don't have to be afraid of them one thing I like about Korea is the crime crime rate, there's very little crime, it still happens, but you don't have to worry about your safety if you're going out for a walk at 2am in the morning, 3am, actually it's one of the busiest times, especially in summer if you go out early morning, there's always people out, and you don't have to worry about them even if people have been drinking and stuff, they're really actually quite nice so I had I had some people the other day you know, I'm living in the van and stuff if you're new to this channel I live in my van in South Korea. I travel around. I live in my van. A couple of guys pulled up, smoking. The girls were drinking. I guess the boy, some of the boys have been drinking too. If the ones that aren't driving, and they seemed to have a problem with my dogs barking. So I just, oh, sorry guys. Oh no, it's okay. Like, mm, fair enough. Sorry, but anyway, yeah, so they're really genuine, really nice people. Before I come to Korea, I really didn't know anything about Korea because we don't really get taught those things in school. We learn a lot about Japan because Japan always seems to be the 
Asian country that you learn about. So, like, I didn't even know the population. There's, like, over... Don't quote me on this. Over 40 million people or 50 million people in Korea. And Australia's only got 22 million or 23 million at the moment. So, Seoul... Seoul has 10 million in the inner city area, like the actual Seoul city. And then the surrounding province, which I'm actually in now, has another 10 million or something. So it's about 20 million in the area around Seoul. And Australia is very similar to that, but it's a lot bigger country. You can travel from the top of South Korea to the south of South Korea. <laughs> that sounds funny. And... You know, three and a half hours, four hours on a good day. It, it, on the busy days, it's seven or eight hours, but that's that's understandable, the amount of traffic that's in such a little area. So, you know, from where I am, I'm only an hour and a half up to Seoul driving. Bullet trying to get there in 20 minutes. You know, it's really good. Uh, transport here has re been really good. Didn't really need a car, but obviously I want to travel around more free. So, I've got a car. Next thing that I want to talk about that I've learned in... Lessons I've learned in Korea is... The language. Learning a foreign language. So in school... In my school I went to back in Australia... We had German classes because our... Town was built with German settlers. So we learned a little bit of German. And it's very similar to English. So it's not that hard to learn. But when, when you first look at Korean, you can be quite put off by the Korean characters. They look like little pictures of people and, you know, it doesn't really look like an alphabet. But once you come to know how to read Hangul, which is the Korean alphabet, it's quite easy. I think it's actually easier to read than English for the fact that it's phonetical. So if it's written... Like, for example, in English, you have thought, though, tough. Those kind of words, they've all got the O-U-G-H, but they all pronounce differently. Whereas if you have words written the same characters in Korean, it's always pronounced the same. The pronunciation doesn't change. Only very, very few extreme cases, there may be a little bit difference in pronunciation. But that'll just be so you can differ differentiate between the meanings of the words not because of how you read the language and then uh, obviously I've been learning Korean on and off for the last 10, 10 years now, 10 or 11 years I'm not fantastic because I haven't tried hard enough to get to that level where I have to use it. I guess I'm just too comfortable being around my wife where I let her do a lot of the talking, but I am at a level that I can go out and do things by myself. But I'm not at that level where I can have a full, deep conversation with somebody in Korean. So, and before I leave Korea, if I leave Korea, I want to be fluent. I want to be able to find somebody on the street, just go up to them and start talking to them, have a good conversation with them in Korean. I want to be able to pass the fluent test. I want to be able to pass off as a Korean person. So that's one of my goals for 2020. If you like that goal and you want to see if I hit that goal, please consider subscribing. And if you like this kind of video, walking around, please hit that like button. I want to do more of these. I want to become more confident walking around, talking in front of people. Trees, I think. Persimmon trees. And gum. Gum that has been in Korean. Gum. You can see there, I just flipped it around. He was trimming the bushes. I want, didn't want to keep speaking. So I definitely need to get a bit more uncomfortable in that situation and start speaking. <laughs> the Korean language, like, it's got a great... It's got a great history behind it. Like, they used to speak Korean and use the... Chinese characters so a lot of the Chinese is still built into the Korean language but now that they King Sejong great history there 
King Sejong and his men, they created the Korean alphabet that we now know today and it works really well with computer programming as well. Everything just fits in really neatly. I recommend if if you've never learned any Korean and you're a little bit interested in it, just try and learn the alphabet and learn how to say hello and thank you. 안녕하세요 and 감사합니다. Hello and thank you. Just a couple of little things, maybe once a week or something like that. Just learn and as you learn the language you also get to learn about the culture and how how it's spoken to each other. I'm gonna figure out which way I'm going here. Alright, let's go this way. Heading back up towards the park area. Just out here in the rice fields and stuff. So yeah, it's uh, it's exciting to learn a different language. But it can be it can be uh, frustrating when you're speaking and the other people don't understand you. And sometimes it's not your fault. Sometimes they're just surprised that a foreign person is speaking their language. There'll be many times when I'm out with my wife and I'll be speaking Korean to other people and they're just like, huh, oh, I don't understand you. And many foreigners have this this uh, issue, this problem as well. It seems like they can't register that, oh, that person's speaking Korean, they must be speaking a foreign language. But, you know, a lot of people aren't like that either. You know, I still manage to go and talk to people and order meals and all that. So, just sometimes they're a little bit off put by you speaking Korean or something like that. I'm not 100% sure what it is. If you guys had any experience with this kind of thing, hit me up in the comments. Let me know. I'd love to hear your experiences with speaking another language. Also, if you speak another language, you guys, or you're living in another country and you're watching this video, let me know where you're tuning in from. Let me know what languages you're learning. Maybe if we're both learning Korean, we can get together and on a Zoom call or something and uh, try and speak together in Korean. I have a couple of Russian friends living in Korea that I use to speak them. I speak Korean with them, so it's great like that. The... The language, it has different honorifics, so people older than you, you have to call them differently. You don't call them by their name, you call them by like uncle or auntie or grandma or something like that, even if they're not in your family. That's just how we speak. And if they're younger than you, you can use their name. Uh, that just shows respect. Same in the jobs in your workplace, it's the same. Somebody might be younger than you, but they might be your boss, so you have to call them like, hey, older brother or bus man with a polite way to finish it, not like that. <laughs> but you get what I mean. All right, I think that's enough for Hanguka, Korean. Let's move on to the last one. And it's, I guess my last point, this video is dragging on a little bit, but I guess my last point is just uh, making sure that you don't always think that you know or that the way that you do something is the correct way. The way that we think, do things in Australia and the way we do things in Korea is completely different, totally different culture. So it's just best that you have an open mind about everything. You know, we, I look at things all the time and I'm like, why did they do that? What, what are they doing that for? Oh, that wouldn't happen in Australia. Well, that's, that's interesting. And that's just the way it is. You, if you fight against it, you're not gonna fit in. You're not gonna be comfortable. Uh, not to have too many expectations or better still don't have any expectations and I mean in the way of how things are done how things are dealt with like me being a foreigner living in Korea I'm not going to be dealt with the same as if I was a Korean person which you know after all these years of war and North Korea and South Korea and the fights in Japan and all these things that happened in the past, you can understand why Korean people want to stick together. So if there's a situation where the foreigner might not get treated as well or get looked at a little bit differently, you just got to understand that. That's how it is. It's, this is Korea. You got to respect where you are. I'm in a different country, unlike my own country. So here we speak different language. We don't speak English. And that's another thing. Don't come to Korea and think you can just speak English. Try to speak some Korean, you know, try. 
a lot of foreigners come over here and they just oh, I'll just use English why do I need to learn Korean they all come here teaching English and you know they don't use a lot of Korean it's quite sad actually I've been here for three years and my Korean's not fantastic but I know now like I gotta make it I gotta make more of an effort I can't always rely on my lovely wife to be there for me so well I'll, pl I'll probably stick around in Korea for another three years if I can I've got no no intention of leaving anytime soon anyway so that's uh, something I've got to work on anyway so yeah don't don't expect anything really like the way that they're driving traffic is it's totally different people don't stop at a crossing I can put these in 10 things I don't like about Korea but these are just it's just life in Korea that's it's totally different you've got to adapt you've got to learn these things and not so much become part of the crowd but don't don't be like hey I'm a I'm Australian hey I'm an American this is how we do it like you need to adapt respect the culture that you're living in or that you're traveling to if you come for a holiday respect it watch out at the crosswalk cars probably won't stop for you you kind of have to play chicken with them and see if you can make it across or if you're driving if you get that international permit and you come for a drive cars will turn right at any time at a red light be ready for that and I don't think I think it's a great thing I think it's fantastic it keeps the traffic flowing that doesn't have so much congestion there's a lot of differences so I say don't expect too much don't make any expectations but just don't you know don't think that you know everything and you think that your country's better I think we come into the we come over here and we we want to show as myself has been in Australia I'm very proud when I say I'm a person from Australia and I want to show them that through my actions through my words show them that you know we are good people and at the same time the Korean they're great people as well all right guys well I'm just kind of ranting on here and I think that's been enough for today guys please if you've watched this far like that hit the like button for me please share this out comment where you're tuning in from let me know if you like this style of video I want to get out into the city and walk around people as well so continue to grow this channel every Saturday and Wednesday I'm uploading now from today all right guys thank you guys for watching this far and I look forward to seeing you in the next one Annyeong. thanks guys for watching that last episode of Korea with Jimmy I was coming to you from Ansong South Korea today if you want to watch some more videos please click on those links that are next to my face here and here and please consider subscribing I appreciate each and every single one of you that subscribe and watch my videos it helps me continue to make videos for you and also gives me the support that I'm sharing some information about Korea all right guys this is me until next time this is Korea with Jimmy